Hey guys, what's up? It's me, The Kyle Chronicles, and I am officially three and a half years on testosterone. Um, it's been a while. I thought I was going to make some updates at three years and three months, but life was kind of hectic, so here's, here's this update instead. Um, my last update for this was obviously six months ago in January, so that is where our updates will start. So, January 21st, or no, sorry, January 22nd, uh, I went to my dermatologist and he started me on a retinol 0.5% uh, prescription lotion uh, because I had to stop taking Epirus to get ready for top surgery this coming year. So, uh, I've been taking that since then. Uh, March 4th, I started going to a local gym, uh, and I was aiming for two to three times a week, uh, both to help with dysphoria, also just, like, to get healthy, and, uh, general self-confidence. Uh, then, on April 15th, it was three years and three months on testosterone, plus three days for me. Uh, I had been on retinol for almost three months, and my acne continued to improve. Uh, I only got small breakouts on my face, and my back is almost fully clear, um, except for a few, few spots closer to my shoulders, so more like up top here. Uh, I had to stop going to the gym around the end of March due to COVID-19, uh, because that obviously is a thing that happened, and it made uh, gyms close down, so... That happened, and I didn't start at home workouts, so, yeah. Um, I did notice that I am slowly getting some more hair under, uh, on my chin under my lips, so, like, right here. Uh, I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but, but I have a few hairs there now. Uh, then May 20th, it was my three years and four months on testosterone, plus uh, a few days. Uh, I had called my surgeon's office on May 15th and found out that my top surgery was most likely going to be cancelled due to COVID, uh, and that, you know, they'd be calling me to tell me if it was for sure getting cancelled or not. Um, that sucked. <laughs> uh, I, I cried a lot. Uh, that was a very rough day. Uh, the hair under my lip, it was starting to get darker, so it was turning from, like, that white pale peach fuzz to, like, actual brown hair. Uh, and my mustache started to grow more. Um, it's getting closer to being able to attach on both sides, as you can tell, hopefully. Uh, and my acne was almost completely gone, except for the small breakouts I get on my back, and those are places that I just, I can't reach with the retinol cream. Uh, technically my boyfriend could help, but it's not a big deal for me. It's not, like, on my shoulders or face. Uh, May 21st, so a day after that, my surgeon's office called to officially cancel my top surgery for the time being. Uh, they'd be rescheduling appointments in order of whose surgeries were canceled first. Um, so, yeah, again, that was another hard day. Uh, I cried. Again. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but then, six days later, on May 27th, my top surgery was rescheduled for June 9th. Um, I was extremely shocked that it got rescheduled so fast, but it just ha happened that um, the Alberta government had uh, entered, I think it was phase two of reopening, where more surgeries could start to be scheduled again, and I got lucky and mine was one of the first to be rescheduled. Uh, May 29th is when I printed up and filled out all my pre-op forms, uh, so my consent forms, the blood tests I had to get, uh, the general checkup my doctor had to give me, all that stuff. Uh, June 1st is when I got my pre-op blood work done, and I also got my pre-op physical done by my family doctor. So the blood work is pretty self-explanatory, they just had to take some blood, make sure I was healthy and everything. Uh, the pre-op physical, my doctor just had to go over, make sure like I wasn't sick, check my breathing, my heart rate, my blood pressure, all that stuff, just to make sure that I would be capable to have surgery. <laughs> Uh, June 2nd, I did my over-the-phone intake with the hospital, uh, so they asked me basic questions like, do you smoke, do you drink, do you do any drugs, uh, took down all my medical information, so all, like, the prescribed medication I'm on, uh, they asked, like, if I take Tylenol or Advil daily and stuff, uh, and then they gave me information regarding the day of my surgery. June 9th, 
I got top surgery. Um, I have a bunch of stuff written down, however, I made an entire vlog documenting that day along with the first week of my recovery, so I will leave that link in the description. Uh, so go check that out, but yeah, June 9th, got my surgery. Uh, June 10th is when I finally got to go home. Uh, June 11th is when the home care nurse came to see me for the first time. June 12th, I got my tubes taken out. And then, skip forward to June 18th, uh, I saw my surgeon for my first post-op appointment. She took off my nipple bolsters, uh, and incision tape. Uh, that was the first time my, like, any, everything had been uncovered, because up until that point, my nipple bolsters had been on. Uh, so that was, that was weird. It was, uh, my chest was still pretty numb, so I couldn't really feel, like, her taking the stitches out. It, it was a weird experience. June 29th, I saw my incisions without tape on them for the very first time, because I had to change everything off while going to have a shower. Uh, and the incisions are super thin looking. Um, I'm actually gonna post some pictures, uh, closer to the end of this vlog to show you guys the progression of everything. And I did take pictures that night to, so you guys can see the incisions. Uh, July 1st, the scabs on my right nipple started to come off, but only slightly. Uh, July 6th, I scheduled my second post-op appointment with my surgeon for July 16th, so I actually see her this Thursday. Uh, hopefully she'll clear me to, like, stop wearing the compression vest and everything, and, you know, give me, uh, scar care instructions. July 9th is when I officially reached one month post-op from top surgery, which was very exciting, and it's weird that I have already made it, like, a month post-op. I didn't think it would come so soon. And then, July 12th, 2020, I reached three and a half years on testosterone. Um, so I did have an infection starting at the end of my incision under my left armpit. It's kind of like up, like there. Uh, it's, it's fine now. It's, my mom helped me clean it up with some alcohol swabs. I made sure to put like a separate bandage over it and it's all clear now. No more infection, thank God. Uh, I only have partial scabs left on my right nipple now. Uh, all the scabs have fallen off of my left nipple. Uh, it still looks kind of gnarly, but you know, tis what it is. And my acne is now almost completely non-existent. Uh, I've been on retinol for six months, and it I, I feel like it has definitely helped more than the pills did, and my boyfriend can also attest to this. The pills helped get rid of a lot of the redness, and it did, like, kind of minimize my breakouts, but this cream has made it, like, my face is completely clear almost always. I get, like, a few spots in my beard or, like, on my forehead, because, you know, those are oilier zones. But besides that, it's it's gone. Even my back, which I can't really reach that much to put the cream on, is clear. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a busy last six months in regards to my transition. Uh, I went through a roller coaster of emotions, and I'm excited to see what the next six months brings. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm like speeding through this ending bit, but my camera's almost dead. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Bye.